Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, One Rental at a Time. And this is a video I've been looking forward to doing for about a month. There's been a lot of talk in the real estate arena about certain cities and locations being a bubble. So I reached out to an economist in that area, specifically in Idaho or Boise. So let's welcome Jan. Is it Rosier to the show? It's Ashley Rosier. Rosier, I'm sorry. It sounds better. <laughs> Well, Jan, uh, do me a favor. Why don't you share with the audience your official title, and then we'll get to talking about boys. I'm a regional economist with Idaho Department of Labor. I've been with the agency for 18 years. Formerly, I was regional economist for South Central Idaho, which covers the Twin Falls and Blaine County, Sun Valley area, which was interesting. A yeah. bit more agricultural oriented. Now I'm in the urban center of Idaho covering Southwest Idaho, 10 counties, which includes Ada County and Canyon County. Very, very cool. The interesting thing about 18 years means, because I've been buying real estate for 20 years, is that means you and I were on the other side of the Great Recession. We, you know, 2002, three, four, yes. right? The whole, the, whole, the whole come up. So why don't we talk about that first? What was going on in Boise kind of 03, 04, 05? Was it, was it a lot of construction or... What was the economy like in Boise? Because I think what we're going to see is it's very different today. But let's talk about the other side of the Great Recession to begin with, if you don't mind. Well, when you mention 03, 04, 05, that's coming off of another recession, 911. Yep. And that did hit Idaho a little harder than some pundits claim. Mm. I started with the department around the end of 2003. I started the day after Thanksgiving in Twin Falls, Idaho, and there was a circle of people waiting to get in the doors in order wow. to use the computers. Things were a little different back then. There wasn't as much online presence. There mm -hmm. wasn't as much connectivity and broadband. Mm -hmm. So people wanted face-to-face -face interaction when they had issues. Idaho was more of a seasonal economy than it has evolved into now. You're seeing Climate change is probably helping us a little bit there in which our, our growing season and our winters don't seem to be quite as bad. We've had one snowmageddon, we call it back in, I believe it was 16, in which we really got dumped on. But uh, weather has changed and I, Boise has gotten to be a very climate positive area. It attracts a lot of people for that reason. They don't yeah. have to do a lot of shoveling. They don't they have pretty temperate seasons overall. And right now we're finishing up moving towards the winter, but the fall in Boise is terrific. Beautiful. And if people yeah. travel here during that time, they really become enamored with the area. Yeah. And that's what we've seen. We've been in the, Idaho has been in the top rankings for, for growth yeah. at 2.1% pretty much over the last four to five years, we've been in the top one or two. Yeah, one of, one of the things, because again, a lot of people in the real estate arena want to compare now with back then. And one of the things I want to come out in this discussion is Boise and Idaho, just in general, essentially are different economies, right? It was very kind of seasonal, I don't know, maybe retirement oriented, but now it's really much a much more diverse economy, right? There's tech, there's IPOs, um, there's, there's, it's, I don't know, just fundamentally a different economy in 2021 versus like 0405. Is that fair or am I off? I, I think that's fair. We really concentrated on our large employers back then. We had a number of corporate offices in, in the Boise area. They included Morrison Knudsen, which eventually evolved into Washington Group, and then it moved out of state. But it was a traditional long-term huge mm. construction company that did international bidding and projects, uh, rapid transit in other countries. And that had a huge presence. Boise Cascade was mm. a big timber company. And, and we know that timber companies, typically what they do is hold land. Yeah, And it just isn't in the headlines as much anymore. It still has a beautiful building in downtown Boise, but you just don't hear much about it. Mm -hmm. Micron was taking off. Absolutely. Micron was, was on an upward climb and HP was still a big presence. And mm -hmm. you've seen a lot of that go away. And we've had backfill from the smaller upstarts. Quite yeah. frankly, we have a group that works with high tech 
and that encourages development of it. They do a lot of funding of projects for high school students and college students to come mm -hmm. up with ideas and innovations. It's very fun atmosphere in not only Boise, but we've even had that cluster up in Northern Idaho around the mm -hmm. Coeur d'Alene Sandpoint area in which very they have cool. aerospace. They have some things going on there too that we don't we don't see as much uh -huh. because it kind of blends in with the Spokane metro area. Ah, yes, of course. But they've had tremendous real estate growth, but much of that has been pretty expensive yeah. real estate. Yeah, and sure. they've had a lot of retirees. But yeah. once again, we still need workers and there still are people in migrating that are of that younger age. Yeah. Sure. I seem to recall again. I read. I read up on Boise uh, for this interview. I think Boise's unemployment rate was like three point. It's really low. Three point one. It's two point nine. Two point nine. Two point nine. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, we, we have a couple of counties that are one point nine. That's yeah. <laughs> I remember back when I was studying economics in college. Full employment was six percent, and you're at one point yeah. nine. That's right. Yeah, five, five is the one I, I learned and you're younger than I am. So we, you know, yeah. you hear different things, that's yeah. for sure. And, and, and it's moved down to 4%, they think now. Sure. There's yeah. always a certain component of individual that maybe their background, their experience, their, their personalities make them a little bit more challenging. Yeah. To hire. We like to use euphemisms. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So there's always going to be a component of that. And we still do have clusters of seasonal employment in sure. Idaho. When you look at the Sun Valley area in particular, and maybe McCall, you certainly, certainly Sun Valley, because you have McMansions there that yeah. need caretakers and they need landscapers. Sure. And those landscapers come back, they go on unemployment in the fall and they come back in the winter and mm -hmm. they, they shovel snow and they do various things. And their, their unemployment extends till the next spring when they come back and start the yeah. start with the growing season again. So, sure. you know, there's still pockets of it. We have a lot less mining up north yep. just because metals haven't kept pace. Uh, we don't have quite as much timber because there's a lot more involved bureaucratically to pull yep. timber out of areas. So, you know, we have, we have changed to the service industry, like most of the States, most sure. of the world, but we still have a strong, strong goods producing yeah. part of our economy. Yeah. So again, when I think of Boise and I'm trying to help people realize that if you're, if you're just looking at a price chart, like, Hey, Boise's, you know, I don't know what it is 525,000 medium home. And oh, right. before it was 303, uh -huh. you're missing the picture. Step one, the economy is fundamentally different, right? You were very kind of, you were focused on the big three before the, before the crash or before the great recession. Now much more diverse, much broader. Uh, then, you know, your unemployment picture, sub 3%. I mean, there's a lot of good things going on in the economy. Next, I want to talk about migration. I, I didn't really find great data on migration kind of early 2000s, but I'm guessing it's four or five, maybe 10x migration now versus back then. But again, I didn't have anything to compare it with. What's migration now versus, you know, 15 years ago? Well, there was less reason to come to Boise probably. Uh, yeah. Back then, we have really expanded a lot of factories, quite frankly, and they're really cool factories. They have a lot of stainless steel. They're quieter. The jobs are a lot more high tech. Yeah. There's a lot more robotics involved. We have a lot of warehouses that are like that, too. They're sub-zero temperatures. Wow. They, they go up to the moon practically they are so high and so they have systems that work within there to to move things around and so you have to have employees that are pretty pretty versatile they need to be able to troubleshoot they need to be uh, able to scale down and dumb down a problem and and figure it out and solve it but yet some of it has to do with programming yeah. so they have to be very versatile in their skills and that's attracted quite a few people lately too yeah when we looking at when we're looking at our job openings, they're they're across the board in all industries. You know, we'll always have the same as other states. We'll always have registered nurses that mm -hmm. we can't fill enough of, and truck drivers that we can't fill enough of, and that's right. across the board. Yeah, that's everybody. everybody. Yeah. Right, right. But we also have these needs that don't necessarily require a college degree, but they do provide pretty good wages because they give bonuses and. Yeah. 
And they're really about retaining the talent. So they're offering a lot of compensation. Yeah. When I think and about my Idaho. <laughs> yeah. When I think about Idaho and Boise, and again, don't I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but when I was getting ready for this 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 session, I'm thinking pre-2006, the reason to go to Boise for the most part was retirement, quality of life. You're you're mm-hmm. on that side of the hill. Now, when I look at migration, there's still obviously some of that and probably more of it, right? People fleeing California, uh, the record numbers uh, going to Boise that I, that I saw. But also now it's the younger folks, right? There's more people that, hey, my quality of life is I want to be outdoors and do these. And oh, by the way, I want to work in tech or I want to do this. There's lots more reasons. You're attracting, I guess, a bigger swath of, of adults, right? We uh, really are. Yeah. That's, that's huge. And if you look at Boise, the downtown is so vibrant. It's just so appealing to so many people. And then we have another area that is further west in the more concentrated family communities such as Meridian. And, and there's retail that's doing super well out there yeah. as well. So we, but we have the niche things downtown that really make it attractive yeah. and really draw people in. And then so close, so close, our trail system and our river running through it with a green belt beside it. And the reservoir, Lucky Peak, is just within five miles and a ski resort within a half an hour's drive. It's, It's just bountiful, quite frankly. And so we're seeing a lot of people that come with jobs. Yeah, We've seen a big increase in our civilian labor force. And when we look at that, we're thinking, okay, Uh, But we have so many openings. Where are they going? Well, some of them are coming with their jobs because it's been identified. Work from home. Yeah. yeah, You know, about a third of the jobs out there, maybe a little higher in some areas, can work remotely and their employers are anxious to retain them. So they're allowing that. That's awesome. And again, all of these things are helping Boise. Uh, Again, this, 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 this is, these are reasons I think Boise is has a a better foundation than a lot of people are giving them credit for. So the the other thing I think about when I think supply and demand is the supply. Um, Coming out of the Great Recession, um, was Boise like a lot of areas where a lot of the builders went poof, they went boom, they're gone. And thus you've had years of below trend housing development or was Boise pretty stable? A little bit of both. Okay. You know, Boise is not big enough of a market to attract a whole bunch of different developers. Okay. And so we've had some that have been in the market a long time and they, they stayed the course because they've been through these ups and downs Uh, and they know what to expect. And, and no doubt some of them have probably declared bankruptcy along the way and formed a new corporation. Mm -hmm. But regardless, if they still have subs that are willing to work for them, then they're, they're golden going forward. Mm -hmm. We had some new developments that were, partially constructed as far as infrastructure, Mm -hmm. really big ones. Uh, They had to get some really unique financing. I think they call it um, a CID. I'm trying to remember exactly what it stands for, but it's an additional tax rate in which the homeowners pay towards the infrastructure that has been put in place. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, And this is an area on the way kind of out out of town towards Lucky Peak and and some of our higher mountain towns. Mm -hmm. And it's it's boomed, absolutely boomed. It was starting to before the recession and it has just taken off. And I I can't even determine how many 2,000, 3,000 homes have been built in this planned area. Okay. They still don't have, it's it's still really a desert as far as getting some backfill for restaurants and, and for retail, Mm -hmm. but maybe that's part of the charm of it, you know, and they can travel when they need that, but they have their community. And it's, it's been fun to see that happen. Downtown Boise has so many apartment buildings that are being built and they have such nice amenities. Mm -hmm. Now they're not very affordable. Yeah. So we are, they are for those companies that are paying those analysts and, Mm -hmm. and those bankers and, and those money advisors, all of those folks are part of what is going into the young people that are probably buying those. But I think there's retirees that are buying these yeah. as well. They're selling um, there's their condos and yeah. apartments. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's a lot of Cal- again, I saw a large percentage of, of Californians going to Boise, right? They sell their they sell their house they bought 30 years ago and then they buy cash 
Sure. And, like, they're not and it's happening price. in Washington too. Those are there are two markets that are really feeding into um, Idaho in general. Gotcha. There's there's just some lack of density that we have in Idaho. I mean, we mm. have I think that the new population estimate for Idaho was one point. Three nine or something like that. We're still not at two two million, and mm. with that big of a state and that low a population during a pandemic, that has seemed to be really appealing to a lot of people. So they've come with their RVs and yeah, space is good. <laughs> space is good, yeah. And they've it's it's really attractive areas that they're going yeah. to, and I don't blame them. Um, but I will say that not. Not everybody that's coming in and taking some of these downtown condos and that sort of thing are from out of state. Some of yeah. them have had big homes and now they're empty nesters and they see how fun it is just to walk and ride yeah. by because downtown Boise and, and the greater part of Boise is very walkable, very bikeable. And yes. that's something that local leadership has really endeavored to ensure that we have the trails. We have trails called Rivers to Ridge and they just go from the river all the way up wow. into the hills and up to Lucky Peak. So it's it's really appealing for a lot of people that even live here. Um, That's awesome. And and people visit from other parts of Idaho. It's it's kind of a little mini vacation to come to Boise area and, and just enjoy. So, That's awesome. Yeah, I I don't necessarily think we have a bubble. I think we did escalate a little fast, and it yeah. might come down some, but. We need more inventory. There's no doubt about it. And that's it, that's that's kind of where I wanted to, to get to the end of this is uh, demand is demand often moves a lot faster than supply, right? We get into a pandemic, space right. is good, Absolutely. right? The 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 human can they they move fast, right? The the masses come quick. It takes a while mm -hmm. to build a housing community, build apartments. Uh, I'm guessing, <laughs> I'm guessing nobody saw this pandemic coming, so there wasn't a lot of empty units being built. So you're, you're, the, the, the builders, construction, the city government, they're all actively approving stuff so they can kind of meet the demand. Because you, 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 you had a lot of demand that you probably didn't think was coming or at least didn't plan for. Well, I mean, we were still just barely recovered from the Great Recession as far as that specific industry. Right. You had mentioned that a lot of the builders, did they flee? It wasn't necessarily a lot of the, the general contractors, but a lot of those folks that were contractors, specialty contractors, they're willing to work through back pains and shoulder pains and, and hiring people uh, to do the work for them because there's great demand. But then the recession hits and if the money's not pouring in, maybe it is time to retire or maybe it's right. time to get that job at Home Depot and just take some time off and enjoy what you've already earned. Right. And work a part time or, or a lesser responsibility job. And so we really had a, a 10, oh gosh, it seems like probably eight years of recovering for yeah. our construction jobs. Okay. Finally, okay. at the end of 2020, uh, the state as a whole was up 2% over where we were before the Great Recession. That wow. was that was a big peak. And some of it was, uh, you know, you look at Blaine County, where I, I mentioned Sun Valley and Ketchum, 40% of their jobs in general were dedicated to construction, and they're still not recovered. They're not going to get those jobs back. And part of it, part of it is just the fact that there are less people doing second homes. Right. Uh, a lot of those folks that made a lot of money, uh, potentially in things selling assets that weren't real assets mm -hmm. and some regulations went in place. Some of those jobs went away. And right. those were some of the people that bought these big homes. Gotcha. So we really didn't have quite as much demand up there and they haven't recovered. Southwestern Idaho, which includes Boise, is was 8% over mm. when they were pre-recession. So they were the, the region that had the fastest return to the area and it's because there was demand there was yeah. kind of demand that started before the pandemic even yeah, yeah absolutely i don't know if you have this data but when, when i think about the real estate market in boise at this point it's still an inventory problem meaning there's not a lot mm -hmm. of inventory available hence when you have a surge of demand you only have one house so it's whoever can afford the most kind of gets it right which makes appreciation i think boise was up 31 or 33 percent year on year just an incre incredible number but 
do you see that coming more into balance over the next year or two as maybe more supply comes online or demand? Maybe you get some people that boomerang back. Do you see any of that? Well, certainly there's, there's more inventory coming on because people have more certainty about the future. The right. pandemic is a little bit more, you know, we've wrapped our arms around. Yeah, we kind of get it now. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we have the vaccine and, and that's helped in some cases. I mean, I know so many people that have the Delta variant, they're not very sick and they're, mm-hmm. they're so relieved they got the vaccine. So, you know, it's, it really was a health crisis. It got politicized. It's unfortunate, but going back to the fact that, yeah, there's still more demand than there is supply, even though the supply is starting to loosen up. So Mm -hmm. we're starting to see more, but if you look out at the surrounding bedroom communities, and I wouldn't even call them bedroom communities. These are, these are cities that have their own industries. We have a lot of food processing in Southwestern Idaho, Mm. a lot of cheese, potato, sugar beets, all of those have pretty good jobs for individuals mm. that stick with it. And they are located to the western part in Canyon County. So Caldwell had tremendous growth over the last 10 years. It's a little community that dedicated, they saw what Boise did. There was this, there was a consultant that went through and was giving all of these economic and community development individuals ideas on how to build up their downtown to make it attractive and appealing. And Caldwell implemented it to the nth degree. They have done a terrific job. They have a little holiday lighting that goes on um, around an ice skating rink in the winter. And it draws a lot of people and it has real trendy restaurants right around the edge of it. And it has a big bandstand so they can have music and concerts and shows going on there. So it's, it's really been appealing they have a small college, private college mm. that's there, and they're growing their housing market slower than Boise, absolutely, but they're getting some of that runoff. Yeah. So it's Mountain Home to the east, uh, an area that's a little bit more deserty, not quite as appealing, but the housing prices are a little bit better. So all right. of these places with the better housing prices, I think people are are looking at that. The problem is it is hard to get a contractor. It is Mm. hard to get any work done. You have to wait a long time. I know in my neighborhood, I see so many trailers around and I know those people have waited probably six months, 10 months to get somebody to come. So that's that's a problem too, because we still don't quite have, um, when we're looking at high school students and and that age where they're determining their careers, part of the problem is they're really, captivated by healthcare. Ah, okay. Healthcare has done a great job in pricing occupations and making sure they're paid livable wages. Mm-hmm. They're offered shifts that are longer and they have more time off. They've done some things that are more appealing to young people. Mm-hmm. They get to choose their schedules. They might be night people versus day people. Sure. And construction just isn't quite getting the young people like they used to. Okay. And I hear the industry leaders really grouching about that. And they're out there trying to educate them that, look, come earn and learn yeah. and do apprenticeships. You will have a career that will give you lots of toys and fun things. Throughout yeah, life. for the rest yep. of your life. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So when I, when I think about Boise, uh, again, I think there's a lot of people claiming that, you know, Boise is going to blow up. It's a housing. They're just looking at price charts and they're not mm-hmm. understanding the economy in Boise is fundamentally different than 15 years ago, not to mention demographics, population, migration, quality of life, a lot of great things going for Boise. So if, in, if anything, I'm going to call it a housing slowdown, right? Because I do think 33% is unnatural, right? Mm-hmm. I don't, I, you know, right. 33 on top of 33 is probably not, <laughs> like, probably not likely. Sustainable. Uh, it's not yeah, sustainable. That's, that would break. That would, that would not be good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't see, I don't see a big, I don't see a big, the economy is working. It's functioning. You have 1.9% unemployment. You have higher paying jobs. Well, not- that's in one County. Hold on. That's okay. in one County. 2.9. Oh, 2.9. I'm and, sorry. My and bad. then, oh, and you. then Boise city is at 2.1 though. Yeah. It's low. Sub <laughs> it's three. Low. It's, low. <laughs> it's just yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's because again, housing, as I teach on my channel, talk about all the time is payment base, right? Mm-hmm. Very few people write a check for a house. So you're buying right. a payment. 
Mm-hmm. So the people that are getting yes answers in Boise to buy homes, yes, at 33% higher are employed. They are putting mm-hmm. down. They can afford the payment. They're getting a yes answer. Sub 3% unemployment, migration, uh, more diverse economy. You're not like, hey, we just have, we just have cascade and if timber goes belly up, we're done. Yeah, it's no, just, we there's yeah. so many great things going on in Boise that I don't think people are really asking themselves you know, it, it, they're just looking at it going, where is Boise on a map again? It's some small area. What's going, how can it be 33%? There's a lot of great stuff going on. And a lot of them are a, a positive trend that will continue for years to come, I think. Oh, I think so too. I think the thing that's going to hit the national market is just the, the raising mortgage prices. Yeah, because that, that, um, impacts, price, that impacts payment, right? Higher rates mm-hmm. against even a flat price means bigger payment. You get less yes answers. Yeah, you know, Boise could slow down, could be single digits up, single digits down, but that's not a crash. That's no, not not a crash crash. at all. And another thing is that these markets, even though sometimes people look at Boise and they go, oh, they've really priced themselves out of the market. It's really high. Young people can't buy homes. You know, that's that's the big concern among people that have lived here for a long time. However, you know, you're looking at people coming from markets that are, you know, maybe not double, but Gosh, 50%. 60%. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so they still think things are pretty affordable. <laughs> yeah. If yeah. you're leaving Spokane or Silicon Valley or LA, Seattle, you're like yeah. Seattle, right? Yeah. You're like, I'm pretty good. I can get a second yeah. car. I'm good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So Jan, I appreciate you saying yes to this, uh, having an interview, having a discussion about Boise. I learned a bunch of stuff and I actually did research for this. So uh, if somebody wanted <laughs> to go- It's a topic I love. So thanks for inviting me. Awesome. Yeah. So if somebody wanted to just go look at Boise data, where would you send them? Does, does the, do you have a website where you, know, you guys publish your data or where, where would you we send do. them? We do. Uh, LMI, which stands for Labor Market Information. If you okay. just type in lmi.idaho spelled out .gov. Oh, you can cool. go and find indicators on every county in in our state. Going to Southwestern and going to Ada County, you'll find more specific data on Boise. Uh, cool. It's pretty hard to find city data exactly, but the Department of Commerce does a great job too, and they can be found at commerce.idaho.gov. So That's they awesome. like to splash the headlines how we're top in the nation for population growth and yeah. Top in the nation for most livability. I mean, we have so many awards the last five years. It's just incredible. There's a lot a of good, a lot of good or even great things going on in Idaho. A, mm-hmm. You're a lot more, uh, you're not single threaded. Um, there's a lot of just, a lot, I think there's some amazing stuff going on in Idaho. And yes, there's been an unbelievable growth, at least in housing appreciation that could slow yeah. down, but still a great place to live. Lots of good stuff. Uh, I think you've got many more years of goodness ahead of you, Jan. So thank you very much for doing this. Again, lmi.idaho.gov. Perfect. Thank Thank you, you, Michael. All right, take care. Take care. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye.